The rapid seizure of much of the country, including the capital, by the Taliban has raised grave fears of a return to past patterns of human rights violations and stoked desperation among many Afghans. In recent weeks, my office has received harrowing and credible reports of the impact on civilians of violations of international humanitarian law, as well as violations and abuses of human rights by the parties to the conflict. UNAMA's Protection of Civilians report from 1st of January to 30th of June this year already indicated an increase in civilian casualties of nearly 50% compared to the same period in 2020. Unquestionably, that toll further increased over the month of July and August. In particular, we have also received credible reports of serious violations of international humanitarian law and human rights abuses taking place in many areas under effective Taliban control. They include, among others, summary executions of civilians and all the combat members of the Afghan National Security Forces, restrictions on the right of women, including the right to move around freely and girls' right to attend school, recruitment of child soldiers, and repression of peaceful protests and expression of dissent. There are grave fears for women, for journalists, and for the new generation of civil society leaders who have emerged in the past years. Afghanistan's diverse ethnic and religious minorities are also at risk of violence and repression, given previous patterns of serious violations under Taliban rule and reports of killings and targeted attacks in recent months. The United Nations is committed to stay and deliver aid to those in greatest need, to support efforts to restore peace and stability, and to promote the rights and dignity of all Afghans. With fundamental human rights in the balance, my office will be working urgently to reinstate arrangements for monitoring human rights violation. In statement over the recent week, weeks, the Taliban has pledged to respect and protect human rights. Taliban spokespeople have made specific commitment to respect women's right to work and girls' right to attend school within the Taliban's interpretation of Islamic law. They have also said they will respect the rights of members of ethnic and religious minorities and refrain from reprisals against those who have worked with the government or the international community. The onus is now fully on the Taliban to translate this commitment into reality. In seizing effective control of much of the country, they must ensure in those areas ongoing respect for the international human rights commitment made by the state, as well as ensuring ongoing and indeed heightened provision of essential public services without discrimination to all. International human rights law is immutable. Enjoyment of human rights is not subject to changes in control of the territory or de facto authority. A fundamental red line will be the Taliban's treatment of women and girls and respect for their rights to liberty, freedom of movement, education, self-expression and employment, guided by international human rights norms. In particular, ensuring access to quality secondary education for girls will be an essential indicator of commitment to human rights. There should be no reprisals and no sanctions against the thousands of human rights defenders who have contributed to their people's well-being and rights. The mandates, operation and independence of the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission should be respected. I call on all states to create safe pathways for Afghan refugees and migrants, broaden asylum and resettlement programs and immediately cult the deportation of Afghans who seek protection. Neighboring countries will need additional financial and logistical resources to assist refugees, and all states must be mindful of their obligation to give protection and assistance to those fleeing danger. Mm -hmm. 
I urge this Council to take bold and vigorous action, commensurate with the gravity of this crisis, by establishing a dedicated mechanism to closely monitor the evolving human rights situation in Afghanistan, including in particular the Taliban's implementation of its promises with a focus on prevention. United and unequivocal action by member states will be an important signal to the Taliban that a return to past practices will not find acceptance in the international community, neither now nor in the future. The Afghan people have come too far for such an outcome to ever be tolerable. Thank you, Madam President. I thank you for your statement. I now give the floor